Whoa, they actually did it. For the first time in over 10 years, Apple has completely redesigned the software on the iPhone. There are updated icons, completely revamped animations, and an entirely new look and feel with what Apple is calling liquid glass. Today, I wanna to show you all the big changes in iOS 26, as well as a lot of the smaller things I've noticed that Apple did not mention. Overall, this is probably the most interesting update we've ever seen. Beginning with the new lock screen, it looks pretty similar to before. You've got your date and time at the top and your toggles at at the bottom. However, if you press and hold, you can now make the clock a lot bigger with what Apple calls the adaptive lock screen. You can see as the clock gets larger, it actually moves your wallpaper around and you can do this with pretty much any of the images in your photo library. But when you look at notifications, that's when you can really see this glass aesthetic come to life. As soon as you engage with one, you really see these glass panels start to take over what's in front of you. They sit directly on top of your content and when you slide back, it's sort of like melding these panels together. And it's even more noticeable on the home screen because as you move your phone around, it's a subtle detail, but there's this light that basically refracts around all of your widgets and your icons, your dock, your notifications, everything reacts using the gyroscope to give you a greater sense of depth. Notably, Apple has also updated every single one of these stock app icons to have more depth and detail, but my favorite change is probably hidden away and customized. You've got your traditional light option right here in dark room from last year, which does look super clean. But to really experience the full glass vibe of iOS 26, go over to the new clear option and everything on your home screen from widgets to icons to the dock become fully translucent and see-through. And this works across Apple's apps, third-party apps, everything looks completely different like a window. And we should take a second to just see how wild this looks. I can't believe a stock iPhone out of the box can now look like this on day one. That is a day I never thought I would see. Of course, this new look also extends inside of Apple's apps, like the redesigned camera app that is significantly more focused than it has been historically. You only have two modes that show up at the bottom by default now. To switch to anything else, you have to swipe over and reveal sort of these hidden menus. And hidden's kind of the theme here. You tap on the photo button to reveal your sub menu of things like flash, live photo, timer, but you can also go back here in the top left-hand corner to change from a standard photo to raw or adjust the megapixel count. So definitely a bit of a learning curve here, but I think Apple makes up for it in the new Photos app. They have finally brought back the tab bar. It was gone for a year with the disastrous iOS 18 Photos app that not a single person liked, and now it is way easier to have access to things like your collections and your favorites. Also in the Photos app, you can now turn any 2D photo into a 3D spatial photo. It's definitely a bit of a gimmick, but you get this kind of cool parallax effect, and I don't think it's all that practical, but it is pretty fun. This tab bar at the bottom, by the way, is consistent across all of your apps. It also has this sort of magnifying glass bouncy effect now, which is probably one of the most satisfying things you will ever do. And it also floats above your content now. It's not glued to the bottom of the screen like it used to be. You can technically see the content slightly underneath of it, even though there is a heavy glass blur effect. And you can see a really clear example of this in the new version of Safari, which is probably the most minimal app by far. By default, this is how a web page looks now. You just have the back button, the URL bar, and then your additional option menu. But when you scroll down, it goes just to the name of the website, and it is a true edge-to-edge -edge full screen experience. Now, I've only been using this for a couple minutes, but immediately I noticed some things take two clicks now. Like, you can't just go back, you have to tap and then you can go back. As soon as you scroll, the back button goes away. I think I can get used to it, but I'm not sure that this is gonna stick around in the final build. At the very least though, I'll say that iOS 26 feels consistent and I'll show you some more features in just a second. I also wanna show you how it works on the iPad now because Apple's also added liquid glass here and finally on the iPad, proper windowing. Look at this. You can now drag up apps in Windows and then from the corner, drag them down and this time they dynamically resize just like you would want them to. They work like Windows on the iPad always should have worked. They basically just work like Windows on any other computer. You don't feel limited or locked down and you can just drag things up in front and then pull from the corner and really feel like you've got a custom desktop here. They can go off the screen too. It's like a Mac. Look in the top left hand corner, you now even have the Mac stoplight. To close it out, minimize it or full screen, you just tap 
and it's gone. You can even swipe all this away to put it to the side, swipe once more, it's basically back to tablet mode and you're back on your home screen. Now, the new iPad OS is definitely an improvement, but I still found that writing and drawing doesn't feel as good as it could, which is why I partnered up with Paperlike, who sponsored today's video. Paperlike is a screen protector for your iPad that makes writing and drawing feel just like paper. It adds that classic stroke resistance when using it, the Apple Pencil that makes it feel like you're taking notes in an actual notebook or drawing on an actual sketch pad. For me, it's the perfect blend between digital drawing and traditional art, and you feel it every time you use it. It's all powered by Paperlike's exclusive NanoDots technology, which are these tiny microbeads that are engineered to add that resistance and improve haptic feedback when you're using your Apple Pencil. On top of that, I also love the Paperlike because it makes seeing what's on my screen a lot easier. Because it's a matte display protector, you're not getting the harsh glares and reflections that you would traditionally, and it makes working outside or in a bright environment so much more enjoyable. So make your iPad even better with Paperlike. Use my link down below in the description to get one for yourself. A huge thank you to Paperlike for sponsoring this one. This thing is awesome. Now let's get back to the rest of the video. They even fixed the files app on here now where you can drag to make the columns wider or smaller. You can sort more easily. There's additional options to view sorting. Plus Apple's even added the preview app on here. So it's way easier to look at and work through PDFs. You can even mark them up immediately with the Apple Pencil. Oh, and when you connect your iPad to a Magic Keyboard, it gets even more powerful with the menu bar from the Mac now making its way to here. So there is so many additional options you can access that were just completely hidden away before. I don't know what changed at Apple with the iPad this year, and I'm gonna spend a lot of time and make a different video about this. I wanted to just show you this off the rip because I'm not usually this quick to jump to conclusions, but what they've done, I can immediately tell it's different than what they've tried in the past. Preview's not just on the iPad though, it's also on the iPhone, which is great to see Apple added it here as well. It's one of two new apps in iOS 26. The Games app is also new. It looks like a combo of a news hub and an app launcher for all of your currently installed games. And also to see what your friends are up to, there's this arcade tab, of course, to continue promoting Apple Arcade and all the content they have there. Also play together where you can see what your friends are up to and your game library. I see this probably being more helpful on the Mac than the iPhone, but Apple did bring it here too. Next up, I want to show you the new Messages app in iOS 26. You've got some really nice new animations here when you swipe over from the left or the right, but when you enter a chat is where you see the big new feature, which is being able to set a chat background. You just tap on one of these right here, it gives you a preview and it moves dynamically behind your bubbles. Or you can also set photos. So if you want to do something cursed, you can set that up in your chat as well. I also can't believe Apple has enabled this, but this is a stock option on the iPhone with iOS. 26. Also new is that in a group chat setting, you can send a poll. So if you can't decide on something and the group has a hard time making a choice, you can now send this in the chat and everybody can dynamically vote on whatever they want. It shows the results in real time. It shows who voted for what. You can even vote multiple times and it's really well implemented. And a small change is there are now typing indicators for group chats. So you can see exactly who is talking and when, where before group chats were just completely blank. You had no idea if people were even looking at the message. Messages. iOS 26 has also introduced a new phone app with a unified view. It puts your favorites at the top, your recents right below, and then you still have access to your contacts and your traditional keypad right there. I definitely prefer this, but surprisingly, Apple is letting you revert. So if you don't want this at all, you just want your favorites, your recents in one place, you can do that and go back to the traditional tab design as you've had always. Next up in the music app, one of the coolest features Apple added recently was this full screen album artwork. And now over on the lock, screen with iOS 26, if you tap on your album art, it can take up your entire display, which looks really good with the new glassy design. And it also just makes listening to music more fun and engaging. Inside the music app as well, lyrics now have translation outside of your native language. So if you want to more clearly understand the lyrics, you can see the description right below what the artist is originally saying. And as somebody who is around a lot of music that isn't my language, this is actually really cool. Next up in the iOS 26 clock app, you can finally change your snooze duration. I can't believe Apple has finally done this, but when you edit per alarm, there is a snooze duration section that you can adjust from a one minute
minute snooze all the way up to 15 minutes, rather than the seven to eight minutes that has historically been the default. Now, as for AI in iOS 26, Apple's approach was definitely to bake general features in, but Siri is exactly the same. The big new AI feature for this release is that if you're on social media and let's say you see an outfit that you like, you can now take a screenshot and then when you view it, you can search the image and it will use Google or other AI services to help you find that. Maybe more practically, this feature would also be useful for something like event invites, where at the same time, you can screenshot just like you did before and it automatically propagates this add to calendar button. Then when you do that, it will take the information off of the display and somewhat accurately make up an event with the time, the location, and the title. It's pretty impressive. As for other AI features, Genmoji is getting upgraded. You can now combine two emojis together. So if you tap on two different pre-selected options, it can make a person laughing, crying with a crown on it. And it does do a pretty good job with these. These are some of the best Genmojis that I've seen. You can definitely tell overall though that Apple's AI stuff is a bit toned down this year because they didn't want to promise anything that they could not deliver on. So that's a good overview of iOS 26 right now. It doesn't have the greatest breadth of features and changes that we've ever had in a release. But the liquid glass design, every moment I'm spending with it, I'm liking it a bit more. Sure, it's a bit rough around the edges right now. Some of the tap targets are really tiny, but Apple's going to spend the next few months improving all of this prior to the public release in September of this year. Even with all the quirks right now, there is just this crazy crazy level of attention to detail that I don't feel like we had seen from Apple in a long time. I was personally bored with iOS for years, waiting on something like this for over a decade. And I can't believe that Apple has actually delivered something that in general looks pretty good. There's something about the glass that makes everything feel premium now. That's the word that keeps coming back to me, where the old blur in iOS 18, honestly going back to that, feels cheap and outdated. I couldn't believe how just switching back to my old iPhone, I said, wait a second, where's the new look? This is... This is kind of ugly now. Okay, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. More videos to come. I've been Sam. I hope you are doing great and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.